Today is another one of my everyday makeup drawer refreshes. We're gonna go through quickly what I was working through the last month or so, give you my opinions on products, and then we're gonna go through and pull in some new things and shop my stash for some products that I haven't played with in a while and kind of refresh this drawer for the next month. So hopefully you guys are enjoying the series, but let's get into it because I know these videos are always super long. Not a whole lot to talk about here in this front drawer. My lip balms continue to stay in here. This MAC Paint Pot in Painterly, I am still enjoying quite a bit. I hadn't played around with this much until this last stat go round, but I'm enjoying it. I think I'm gonna leave it in. There were also two concealers in here that I was testing out over the last month, and that's a bit of a misnomer because I'm also testing out the Makeup Revolution concealers that just came out. I have some thoughts on them. So so I definitely like the Youth FX one a little bit better than the CoverGirl one. I like this kind of cushion tip applicator better than I like the brush tip that comes on the CoverGirl. I don't know, the tone's okay. It's a little deeper than I would want, but it's workable. Then the CoverGirl one is a little bit lighter, but I really don't like these brush tip applicators. I find them very difficult to use. I also found that this CoverGirl one was just a little more difficult to blend out than the Revlon one. So here's what I think I'm gonna do. This can't be donated. There's no way to sanitize it because of this head. So I think I'm gonna keep this one. This CoverGirl one, because it is a brush tip, I think I can get this completely cleaned and donate this one, I believe. So that is what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hang on to the Youth FX one from Revlon, just use it up. I don't know if this would be high on my list to repurchase. And then I'm gonna pass along the CoverGirl one. Yeah, these were just okay to me. This is all my usual brow tree, make me brow, and my little CoverGirl, or excuse me, and my little Revlon concealer. Let's talk mascaras because I actually do have some things I want to change up in here. I know I've left these alone for several rotations. Um, I am going to continue to leave this Dr. Fixer primer in here. I do love that. The other one I'm going to leave in here is my CoverGirl Clump Crusher. This always stays in. One that I completely used up is this it Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. I loved this. This Fiona Styles Mascara, you can't get this anymore. This is her Ultimate Lash Icon Mascara. I bought a bunch of these when she left Ulta and they were like 70% off. Unfortunately, this one is just really dried out and I'm having a hard time with it going on very well anymore. Um, I'm a little nervous because I have one more backup of this in my closet. I'm a little nervous that that one may have gone bad and dried out on me as well, but unfortunately this is one I'm gonna have to toss. I have used this Marc Jacobs one several more times, and to be honest, I'm just having real problems with it making my lashes too clumpy, and I'm really not loving this wand. I'm just finding it too difficult to use I don't know if I'm just slightly ridiculous, but like I have a real problem with getting mascara on my lid when it, the brush is this big and this difficult to navigate. So at the end of the day, I just, I like the effect this lash gives my lashes, but I just don't love the application process. So this is one I'm also going to discard. This little Big Monsieur mascara, I think I have a couple more uses of this and then I will probably have to get rid of it as well. And then last mascara is the Koki mascara, volume and length. I think this is a pretty good dupe for the superhero mascara from It Cosmetics, but I will say I can tell this one is starting to go. It is flaking on me in a way that I didn't used to, so I have definitely used this for, I would say it's been about three months for this guy. I don't mind mascaras like this that I can notice a difference in the formula changing after about three months because I also know that that is really when you should be refreshing your mascaras just from a hygiene perspective and to avoid any issues with your eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one and mark it kind of as complete. These two eyeshadow primers stay in here as do my Physician Formula Lash Boosters. And I'm also gonna just make the decision to leave this Ultimate Brow Highlighter from Wet n Wild in here as well. I really am enjoying this for underneath my, or in my inner rim. I was testing this Koki liner and I love this. If this is still available on the website, I might encourage you to pick it up if you're thinking about a Koki order. I love the burgundy on here. It is amazing, super creamy, but sets down. And then the opposite end, this sort of metallic olive. These are just gorgeous. Like, I love these. So the formula was super creamy, but once it went on your lid, it completely locked down. So I am definitely, definitely going to hang on to this. And then this was a little e.l.f. no budge shadow stick. I got the shade Metallic Mocha. And as I was a little worried about, it's just a little too 
dark of a shade for me to totally love slapping all over my lid. With these cream shadows like this, I really do prefer colors that are kind of mid-toned or lighter. I don't really find that these dark ones are my favorite for shadow stick formulas. So let's talk primers because I did have three back here. One that just did not work for me is this Revlon Photo Ravity Primer. This is the one I got because I think it was that Taylor that loves it as kind of a smoothing primer. This is one of those sort of smoothing, pore filling primers. It has a really sort of thick feel to it on the skin. My problem with this honestly is that I tried this two different times and both times I broke out on my face. Now I don't feel like I have acne prone skin, but this gave me little tiny pimples um, on my cheeks, which is a place I almost never get any sort of acne um, around my nose. And so the first time I did this, I thought, well, maybe it's not this. I let my skin completely clear up. And then I tried it about a week later when everything was hunky dory again and the same thing happened. So this is gonna be a pass for me. I'm not sure why this is reacting so much with my skin. It doesn't feel like a primer I've ever used before. It filled the pores nicely, but I think it may have clogged them in the process. One that I am loving is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. It's a very serum-like primer. It's very, very liquidy if you can see that there. Um, but it feels incredibly lightweight on your skin. This is one of those primers that I think if you have oily skin, you might actually really like because it sinks right into your skin and doesn't leave a very heavy, creamy texture on your skin. I, I don't know, this is a really unique primer. I've not tried anything like this. When I first got it, I thought, oh good, it's just gonna be a lotion. I'm not really gonna notice any sort of difference after using it. Totally disagree. I love that it also has hyaluronic acid and then niacinamide in it, which is great. So some B vitamins and something to help naturally plump and hydrate your skin. The last primer I was testing is this Dr. Brandt Luminizer Primer Base. This is part of his Pores No More collection. I definitely think this does a decent job of sort of smoothing out pores. I don't necessarily think that it is going to be like super pore filling, but it gives a really nice sort of light radiance to the skin, which I think is really pretty. I think it's a little more smoothing than some of my other luminizing products. So I am gonna hang on to this one. I did enjoy it. So in this little middle section here, I was actually testing out three sort of BBCC cream items this last month. Let's talk about this one. This is the Wet n Wild Mega Cushion Compact. I got the lightest shade. This is Ivory. I can't wear this. This is almost greasy on my skin. I don't know how else to describe it. When I first put it on my skin, I thought I was really enjoying it, but by about three or four hours in, I was a greasy mess, and I am not an oily skin girl by nature. I have since seen people with dry skin try and review this and have had almost the same problem as me getting super greasy as the day wore on, so I don't know what's in here that's adding to that greasy factor, but this unfortunately is a cushion that just isn't gonna work for me. One product that did work out incredibly well for me, this is the Holica Holica Petite Aqua Jelly. This is that super weird textured jelly. So I had a darker color of this and I ended up decluttering because it, it didn't work for me and I got the lightest shade that they have. This one actually is a pretty good shade match for me. It might be a slightly yellower, but it is a pretty good match here. I really like how this performs. It goes on my skin just looking like skin. It never breaks down on me. It lasts all day. It's not drying. It's not overly dewy like the Wet n Wild one was. So I really, really enjoy this. The final product I was testing was this Linole BB Cream. This is a single shade. It turns out it's SPF 30 Whitening Intensive Care. It just ended up being too dark for my skin. I had to use kind of a decent amount of lightning drops in order to make it work. So I liked the formula. I liked how it went on. I think I'd have a hard time recommending this because it only is the single shade. If you are a light tone, so not fair, but light skin toned, this may actually work for you. I'm gonna pass this along to a friend who I think this might match, and I know she likes the sort of BB creams that have good coverage, because this one definitely does. So I think she's gonna like this one. LA Girl Pro Contour Powder. This is not bad. I never really got into this cream powder. I just feel like with normal to then somewhat dry skin in the winter time, putting a matte highlight powder on the chops of my cheekbones is just, it's too much for me. This is a really pretty shade though uh, for contour powder. 
I think it could almost work as a bronzer to be totally honest because I like a more cool tone bronzer. I don't know, I'm torn on this one. I like it, but it's also not my favorite. So I think I'm gonna hang on to it for a little bit and play around with it for a little bit more. I did really enjoy this. This is the matte bronzer from Boots. They have four different colors. This is shade Golden Sands. I thought it was a really nice matte formula that wasn't overly drying. Um, I never look chalky on my skin. So I'm definitely gonna hang on to this guy. I also really like the undertone. It wasn't too yellow or too orange. So good undertone on this one. One that I like that I'm just gonna have to be careful with, this is from Julep. This is their So Radiant Bronzer in Medium Tan. So I like the undertone on this, but it's pretty, pretty pigmented. The first time I used this, I was like, oh shoot, I put way too much on. It does have a goldenly undertone and you can definitely see that it's a lot more orangey colored and warm than that number seven bronzer. But I did like the effect I got when I used it with a light hand. So I do think I'm gonna hang on to this one for the time being. I don't know if I have a glowy blush kind or a glowy bronzer rather like this one. So I'm gonna hang on to it. These three Jordana blushes, I did really enjoy them quite a bit. This is a really good matte formula for as cheap as they are. So this is Sweet Honey. So it's a really pretty warm coral shade. Passion Rose, which is a really nice, like sort of just bright, brightening pink shade. And then more of a dusty mauveish rose color in Rose Silk. So I did like all three of these quite a bit. So this Natasha Denona blush was part of my lucky bag that I got from Beautylish. It is the shade 10. I really like this combo. I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about that really light apricot color, but it actually looks really pretty on my cheeks and it's actually quite brightening. Typically, I think for a brightening light shade, I have to reach for like a brightening pink. And this one is actually a brightening sort of apricot color. So really natural looking on my cheeks, adds a nice little bit of glow to it. And then this glowy rose blush blended like a dream, just a gorgeous color. I really like the packaging too. So that suckered me in. Another blush that I have completely fallen in love with, and I kind of knew I would, is the Satin Touch Blush. This is number 30, Satin Bronze. This is the shade you can't get in the United States. States. I did find mine on eBay from a reputable seller and I really wish they would bring this shade over because I think it would be their most popular one ever. It's gorgeous, blends out just like the other ones. The most perfect nude that's not too warm, not too cool. Like I love this blush. I mean, I love this blush. Last blush is this Kiko blush. This is the Arctic Holiday blush in Memorial Biscuit. It's a really beautiful shade and I really liked how it blended out on my skin. Um, it's really pretty and it's not too gold. Sometimes these sort of baked blushes that have a little bit of a gold shift can end up just looking like I put gold brassy color on my skin. This is just a little bit more of a nude rose color with a hint of that gold shift in it. So I really enjoyed this blush quite a bit. All right, let's talk about a product that didn't work for me. This is the Jordana Triple Play. This is kind of trying to be like a bite multi-stick. You're supposed to be able to put this on your lips, cheeks, or eyes. Um, on my lips, it just looked like it was not applying at all, like it was skipping and patchy on my cheeks. It never sat down, like no matter what I did. I even tried to set it with powder one day and it didn't even still lock into place. And then clearly if it's not locking down on my cheeks, it's not working um, on my lids either. I don't know, this is gonna be a miss for me. All right, let's talk about these three Kevin Aquan products. So this kind of came in a set. They magnetized together like this. Um, these are smaller versions of full-size products that they have. So here's the thing. I kind of felt like I was gonna be blown away by these and I really just found them to be kind of average. So a couple things. This white one has a clear glitter overlay on it. So I almost feel like it is the same powder all the way through potentially. Once I went through that overspray, I really wasn't getting a ton of highlight from this. So I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to use this product. This purple one is not bad. I don't think I will ever be reaching down into this super violet color here, except for maybe as eyeshadow, it's just too intense of a color on me. Um, this blended together did make a pretty highlight, but once again, it's nothing to write home about. I don't know, and then this one might have worked better at full size, but I really struggled to get just bronzer, just blush, and just highlight out of here. Maybe if the pan size were bigger, it would have been easier to pick those up. The highlight's just average. The blush is pretty, but nothing I don't have replicated many times over. And then the bronzer is not bad. I actually really did enjoy that bronzer, but they seem a little powdery. I don't know, I guess I don't own a lot of Kevin Aquan, and I really thought I was gonna like go gaga for these. 
and I just haven't. I'm gonna keep them because I wanna keep playing around with them. And then the final two things in here are highlighters. So this is the Nobby Get Gorgeous Highlighting Powder. I got this off of the Shop Hush app. Um, I think these were seven bucks, as I recall. This is the shade A703H. So clearly they've put a lot of thought into how they name these. This is one of those baked products. Um, feels a little stiff to the touch. It blended on my skin like a dream. It wasn't too white so that it just looks stark. Like this is a gorgeous highlighter. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. Definitely hanging on to this one. I was really, really impressed with it. I'm tempted to see if there's other colors in this collection that might appeal to me. I have to admit, I really have enjoyed this Too Faced, what is this, the diamond highlighter. It's really fun. And I actually found it to be a really nice highlighter for my skin tone. It's definitely more of that cool toned highlighter. It has some sort of whitish, purplish, bluish shifts in it. This is a highlight that even though it has a bit of a, like a, color shift to it. I find that I can wear most days and I don't feel it's too overpowering with a lot of my makeup looks. So I enjoyed this one. One powder I forgot to mention, this is the Innisfree Noceba Mineral Powder. I left this in there to test again. This is a very lightweight, almost silica feeling powder. Blurs the heck out of my pores. Actually does a great job of setting my under eyes when they're feeling um, really textured or really, like I'm seeing lots of fine lines. I like to use this powder, so I'm really enjoying that. I think I'm just gonna leave these three loose powders back in here for the time being. The Winky Looks Cashmere Kitten Palette. This is an exclusive to Nordstrom. This might be one of the prettiest cool tone palettes out there, and it's not one that I've heard anybody talk about. The metallics are gorgeous. The mattes are stunning. I love the layout in here. I like that you have more of a neutral brown, or you can go plummy, or you can go really cool toned. I love it. It's really affordable too. I think this is like drugstore pricing, even though it's at Nordstrom, so. This is the e.l.f. Shadow Brow and Liner Palette. It's just a whole bunch of neutrals. They blend like a dream. Do I think this is an essential palette, no. I mean, a lot of these tones are very similar. Really, what they were trying to do is give you a whole bunch of different undertones for your brows, but to be honest, I really enjoyed this. I think it's been a good pairing palette. The tones, even though they look similar, I get different variations of warmer and cooler on my eyes, but I don't know. This is one that I will continue to use, but it's not one I would recommend you run out and purchase. This one is amazing. This is the Too Faced Chocolate Gold. I made so many pretty eye looks in here. I think there's only a couple of shades I haven't played around with yet. Um, ironically, I don't necessarily think I'll be getting a whole lot of use out of that really brassy gold color. I think it's just a little too extreme and yellow for me, but hey, maybe at some point. But the pigmentation on these, is gorgeous. I mean, look at that. It's freaking stunning colors. Let me show you this pink because pinks can be sometimes hard to do. This sounds crazy to say, but I've actually made some really pretty wearable to everyday looks out of here using some of these more neutral shades. The four mattes that they've put in here are a perfect spectrum from a cream all the way to a black. So this is a good palette, guys, a really good palette. And one of the first palettes from Too Faced that I've been really excited about in a while. This in here was my Marc Jacobs. This was his holiday palette. I ended up getting this when it went on sale and there was like a heck of an Ebates offer on it as well. I'm really glad that this is in my collection. I mean, really glad. I love this. I think that the colors are stunning. I love the mattes. They're super creamy, easy to blend out. I love that they got some cool shades and some warmth. Like, I'm just really glad to have this. And to be honest, it makes me wanna pick up some more Marc Jacobs palettes. I don't own any of his eyeshadow palettes and I kind of am coveting the purple one. That may have to go into my cart when Sephora does its next sale. Get some use out of all of these ColourPop Super Shock shadows. Um, I'm gonna put these in my collection. I'm getting ready to do a video on my ColourPop single shadow collection. So um, look for swatches for all these in here, but I did like all of these. I'm going to keep them. And then this is the new Tarte. What is this? The Top Yacht Chrome Paint. So I'm a little confused by this product. Every time I see these on YouTube, it almost looks like those L'Oreal pressed pigments, the infallible shadows. Mine is pretty crumbly feeling. And I actually thought it was broken and I requested another one. And then the second one came like that. And then I noticed on the Tarte website that they called this a pigment. So I'm confused on whether or not this is supposed to be pressed and creamy or more of a loose pigment because it's kind of 
somewhat in between the two of them. The shade top knot is beautiful. I mean, it's blindingly beautiful. So I do like this, but I'm confused because when it arrived, it was like all loose in here and I had to kind of press it back in. And so if you were gonna have this be more of a loose shadow like this, why didn't you put one of the little lids in there like the L'Oreal Infallible shadows? Um, I would be scared to travel with this or get it too banged up because then it just like flies everywhere. But it's obviously not a normal loose pigment either. I don't know. I don't know if this got messed up in transit. I don't know if the cold temperatures messed with some sort of like bonding agent that's supposed to help the pigment come together. I'm gonna continue to use this, but I'm not as pumped up about this as I thought I was gonna be based on just the texture. Let's get these through these lip products super quickly. This is the Powder Matte Lipstick from Maybelline. Um, I actually really did like this. I liked the color quite a bit. It does have a bit of a tug on the lips, but I actually found it to be not that difficult to apply. It's definitely a lot more matte than their normal matte formula. So I'm gonna hang on to this color. I may pick up the red one too. I don't know, this is the shade Nocturnal Rose. I don't know if I said that. I am also really loving this new L'Oreal line. This is the first L'Oreal line lipstick that I've purchased that doesn't have that L'Oreal lip smell. It has a really soft vanilla scent. I love it. This is the shade 910 Shining Peach. Just a really comfortable everyday wear. And then this is the shade I've been wearing a ton. This is Varnished Rosewood number 904. And it looks like it'd be darker, but it's just a really pretty mauve color. Like. These are so comfy. Like this is such a good formula for them to have launched in the winter time. Just well played L'Oreal, well played. This little Besame Snow White lipstick, I did wear this once. It's just a really pretty classic red. It's gorgeous. I'm gonna hang on to this, not only because the formula is nice, but the packaging is like, oh come on, it's so cute. So that's staying. And then this Kate Rimmel 107 Cranberry shade, I did finally get around to wearing that once as well. Really pretty formula, I like those. This shade, I'm a little torn on. This is the Metallic Matte. I think this is one I may like more as a layering. I was hoping it was gonna be neutral enough that I would like to wear it on its own. It may be a shade I like a little bit more in the summertime as well, but I do like this formula as far as liquid lipsticks go, and I do wanna hang on to it for a little bit. I finally got around to using this little Trisique. It's like a matte lipstick on one end, and then a gloss on the other, not really a gloss, more of a chapstick shade on the other. Um, this is nice. I mean, <laughs> this is a good thing to keep in your handbag because then you've almost got like a clear chapstick on one end and then a really neutral everyday sort of shade on the other. I don't think I said the color. This is Florence Fig. So this is nice. I, I enjoyed this. I also did enjoy this gloss from Kathleen Lights. This is her Ultra Glossy Lip in Moonchild. Just a very nice neutral with a little bit of a silver glitter in it. Very subtle silver though. And then I've really been loving this new Milani formula. This is their new Amore Shine. So this is a more pigmented gloss. So I ended up getting shades that seem kind of similar to one another, but the top one there is Addiction and the lighter sort of pinkier tone, less brown in it is charming. So really comfortable, but not sticky. These two CoverGirl Melting Pout Mattes. This is the exact same formula as the Revlon. I would lay money on it. I haven't checked the ingredients, but I swear these are the same formula as those Revlon matte lipsticks. I'll put a picture here so you know what I'm talking about. I got the shade Ballerina and Secret. It's not a bad formula. for As far as liquid lipsticks go, it's not incredibly drying. So I do like that about it. Uh, it lasts a decent amount of time. I don't think it's the most long wearing out there. Honestly, if this had a soft vanilla scent to it, I would be far more apt to sit here and tell you these are not bad. I think I would feel much differently about them, but I don't know, this scent is, it's its overpowering to me. Played around with this Flower Beauty Miracle Matte. This is the shade Merlot Kiss. Enjoyed that, so freaking pigmented. So I was playing around with these two from Kathleen Lights. This is a very orange shade. It's beautiful. I feel like I'm gonna like this a lot more in the summertime when I reach for these sort of bright orange shades. That is beautiful. And then that is shade Revere. And then this is Dreamy. And this is a very warm nude. I just like this ultra satin formula a lot. So I'm gonna add these to my collection. This is the Ofra Ipsy Unzipped color. I have no idea what shade this is. It doesn't say. Really pretty mauve. Enjoyed this one. And then last one I didn't have a chance to play around with is the Charlotte Tilbury liquid lipstick. This was another one that came in my 
um, lucky bag and it's a really pretty peachy pink nude so I do want to play around with that that is the shade rising star so I'm gonna leave that one in here for this next go round all right, so that is everything. Let's go ahead and pull out a couple new products and then go forward and shop my stash. I have quite a few new products I'm going through right now in large part because there've been a lot of new drugstore releases for spring and I wanna form some opinions on all of them. So that's what a lot of this stuff is. So I'm just gonna run through you real quickly. I am pulling in two new mascaras, one I know I love and one that I wanna try. I've used this once and I was underwhelmed, but I wanna give it a little bit more time. So I'm gonna pull these two in. For concealers, I've got two Ulta concealers. One is a color corrector in pink and the other one is a full coverage liquid concealer in light cool. I've heard good things about this formula, so I wanna try this. I also wanna try the Lasting Finish Breathable Foundation in Fair. This is from Rimmel. I am a little nervous this is gonna be way, way, way too dark on me, but it was the lightest shade they had, so I wanted to try it. And this I found at Walmart. This is a L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Concealer. This is in the shade C12 Pale. This is an exclusive to Walmart right now, so I hadn't heard anyone talk about this, so I wanted to give this a whirl. This is from Hard Candy. This is their non-touring glam or duo. This has a sort of cream highlighter stick on one end and then sort of a pink matte highlight. I don't know if this is gonna be like a brightener shade or kind of like that Benefit matte highlighter. I don't know, I'm gonna, not sure what to make of this, so I wanna give this a whirl. This is part of the new Revlon Color Charge series. They put out a one, they put out one panned highlighter. It seemed like it was gonna be a really pretty natural glow, so I wanna give that a whirl. Along with these two new Milani Hypnotic Lights. This is in 02 Luminous Lights and 03 Luster Lights. I saw that Temptalia gave these really good reviews, so I wanna give that a shot. This is a bronzer that Kathleen Lights recommended from ColourPop. I think it's gonna be a little dark on me, but I'm gonna give this a shot. And then this is an Essence Metal Chrome blush that may end up being a blush topper. I don't know how I'm gonna use this one, to be honest. It seems really gold. I also have the L'Oreal Lumi Shimmerista in the shade Prismatic Luminosity. So, and then the Almay Make Them Jelly Highlight. This is really strange. Like, isn't that the weirdest thing you've ever seen? Like, I don't even know what to do with this. It has a, cr it's really pink. It has a crap ton of glitter in it. So I at least wanted to give it a shot because Alma is not known for coming up with new and innovative products. They tend to be kind of the basics and this is such a strange product for them to launch. So we'll give that a shot. I don't know if that's gonna be one that it says it's a highlight, but it may be one that I have to put on my eyes. I don't know. We'll see. For foundations, I have two products I want to try that I have samples for. One is the Bare Minerals Bare Pro, and the other is the NARS Natural Radiant. I've been wanting to try these two foundations and decided to get little samples of them versus spending a whole bunch of money um, on something that I'm a little nervous about from a formula perspective. I did pick up the Sephora Bright Future. This is a skin tint, so this is kind of like a light hydrating skin tint. This is the shade Ivory Claire. This is new at Sephora. I wanted to try a more lightweight formula. Two primers this go around that are new. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Dewy Luminous. Wanted to try this one. And then this is an interesting one from Origins. I completely bought into the hype on this guy. I'm not going to lie. This is one that is cooling and it's actually a foam. So it's in like an aerosol can and then you squirt some out. Like Tell me that's not the weirdest thing of life. It's super cooling. I don't, I don't know guys, it's weird. But it felt really nice in the store. It might be totally gimmicky. Wanna try the flower setting spray. This is their hydrating setting spray. Always a fan of hydrating primer, or always a fan of hydrating sprays like this. And then this is the Smooth Set Eye Powder from e.l.f. This is different than the one that they had before, which I think was just a translucent setting powder for your eye. Ugh, I'm not gonna fight that out. Anyway, I wanted to give this a shot and compare it against the other one that I do like from them. So I'm gonna add this in. There's some new and new to me products that I want to test this next month. I picked up two of these crushed foil metallics. These are exclusive to Walmart from L'Oreal. They did some highlighters and some single shadows. And so I picked up two of the single shadows. The highlighters all look too dark for me. So wasn't interested in those. I also picked up one of these Alme quads. I'm not sure I'm gonna feel about these. All these quads are like the same color in four different finishes is kind of the vibe. So we'll play around with it. I picked up one of this 
pigments from Revlon. This is the Color Charge line and it is Lilac Twinkle. So I thought that might be a fun color to play with. And then I also am trying a whole bunch of liquid eyeshadows. There have been a ton of new releases. So I've got three here from Wet n Wild I wanted to test, two that look kind of glittery and one that looks almost just like a cream metallic. I've also got a ColourPop Supernova. I have a Hard Candy Glitterati. And then I have two of the Cover FX Shimmer Veils. I also have the White Peach palette that I've been wanting to play around with for a little while here. I've swatched this, but I have not really tested it a ton. And then the Maybelline, the Pink Edge, just seemed like it was colors that I would really, really like. So I'm excited to play around with this palette. And then this is new from e.l.f. This is their Chromatic Eyeshadow Palette. This seems to be the same palette style as the one I had in my everyday makeup drawer at last go round. That was the all matte sort of brow and shadow palette. This I thought was really pretty, had plums and some warm shades in there. So I also finally broke down and got the Jouer Skinny Dip Palette. Everyone and their mother raves about this palette. It has been so well reviewed and so well rated by so many bloggers that I love. So I haven't even touched it yet. Which one should we go for? Let's try Magic Hour. Ooh, yes. All right, so that's what I'm pulling in for eyes. In fact, I don't know um, if I'm gonna pull anything else in because one thing you're not seeing right now is I have a little drawer here off to the side where I'm testing a few other bonusy makeup items. And two of the things that are in there for me to test are actually these Milani Most Love Mattes and the Bold Obsessions palettes. So these I am testing right now. I have been testing them. I've kind of set them off to the side. Um, and we'll continue to go through them, but I'm really impressed with what I have done so far with them. So these are also kind of in play right now, off to the side. So I have quite a few new lip products. So I think I'm probably gonna just try and test all of these for reviews and then not pull anything from my collection. So I picked up six of the new ColourPop lipsticks. This is Uno Moss, Layover, Ghosted, Money Side Up, What If? And sitting pretty. So I got an interesting range there. I want to play with those. So these are the few high-end products that I want to play around with. This is the Marc Jacobs, the Marc Lip Crayon. This came in that lip kit that Sephora put out. I'll put a picture here on the screen. So I want to play with that. I finally broke down and got the Fenty Gloss Balm after hearing so many people rave about it. I, I couldn't take it any longer. I had to try it. So I want to play with that. And then I also have one full size and two minis of her Mademoiselle lipstick. The full size I have is in single. So it's a really warm color and I'll be interested to see if I can pull this shade off. I also have the shade Candy Venom from that same kit that the Marc Jacobs came from. It's a super hot raspberry pink. And then I also got a very vampy shade. This is Griselda. This is her yeah, dark plum color. I also picked up one of these Maybelline Python lip kits. So this is kind of interesting. This is the shade 30 Provoked and it's like a cream on one side and then sort of a powder on the other that you tap into the middle of your lips. So I wanted to try these, could be fun. Bunch of drugstore stuff. I've got two Essence pencils that I wanna try. One is a soft contouring pencil and one is a long lasting lip pencil. This is a lip gloss from the Revlon Color Charge line. It's sort of a light pinky lavender with a really strong silver glitter in it. So that looked pretty. And then there's a host of new Essence products I wanted to try. This is their new Ultra Last color. They have a bunch of these. The formula felt really creamy at the store. I just got a nice neutral that I knew I would like. This is 06. They have something called Water Kiss. So I wasn't sure what that meant. So I got a really kind of fun orchid color that I thought might be fun to enjoy. Feels very, very lightweight. I'm curious to see what the ultimate finish of this will be. They have a Shine 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 lip gloss, and I will admit, I actually wore this yesterday, and I am really liking this formula. Feels really, really gel-like, packs a good pigment to it. And then they also have a matte, matte, matte lip gloss. I'm, I don't know what that means. I don't know if this is gonna be, yeah, it feels more like mousse. I don't know if this is gonna dry down all the way. This is one of the Milani Keep It Fill lip plumping glosses. Ooh, that shot out of there. Just sort of a light neutral, probably more of a topper color to be honest. And then this is one of the new Hard Candy Cashmere Silks. Wasn't sure what that was supposed to be formula wise. So some of these you can't tell quite from the name what exactly they're going to be. 
And then this is new from Soap and Glory. This is their Pout Standing Lip Contouring Crayon. It has a jumbo pencil on one end and a liner on the other. So you've got kind of jumbo pencil and then liner that looks like it's about the same shade. Products that were setting off to the side, so I missed them, but I do want to toss in. This is another one of those sort of glitter eyeshadows that everyone seems to be putting out. This is from Essence and it's a really interesting blue color. So I'm excited to play with that. This is a new bronzer from Essence. This is the Luminous Matte Bronzing Powder. I have played with this a couple times, but I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the drawer. This is a primer and this is a beauty filter cream from the Korean brand Sun and Park. This is new at Sephora. And this packaging is so super luxe and pretty. I don't know, it's gorgeous. And I like that it came with a little uh, spatula here so you don't have to shove your fingers in the jar. But it looked like a really interesting sort of creamy, luminizing primer. I don't know, I think lots of Korean brands do face products really well, so I was really curious about uh, this and how it worked both as a primer. And then last is this NARS blush in Free Soul. This is new for spring. I think it's just at Nordstrom right now. It's a really pretty soft pink with a bit of a glow. This is one that Tentalia gave an incredible review to and then it was immediately on my radar to get. So I think I picked this up the first day it was out. So um, if you're interested in this, I will link her review of this blush down below. And then just in looking at what I think I might have some gaps on in my drawer right now, I pulled some things from existing products. I haven't used this in a while. I wanna pull in the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Foundation and give it another whirl. I'm gonna pull in the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Press Powder in Warm Light. And then these two Fiona Styles Potted Concealers, one is in Peach Corrector and one is in 0102. I really like these. Um, I think they're nice for days where my under eyes are maybe a little dried out if I remember correctly. So I want to use these. And then I'm pulling in three blushes. One is this Hourglass Blush in Moonlight. I love this blush. I just feel like it's a favorite, just feel like it's one of my favorite blushes for winter. So I wanted to pull this in. I'm going to yank in this Matte Revolution blush. This is one of my favorites from them in Nude. And then this Blackberry blush, which is a really interesting sort of purpley mauve color from City Color. So I think that will do me in the face products and filling in any gaps. So let's go ahead and load up the drawer. Here's the drawer with everything in it. I think I definitely might have too many concealers, but hey, what do you know? Some of these I may try once and be like, nope, not gonna work for me. So um, everything else fits in here pretty well. Here's the middle drawer kind of laid out with blushes and bronzers and face products. And then I've got a giant pile of liquid shadows to try along with my palettes and a couple singles. And then a giant pile of what seems to be all rosy pink colored packaging down here at the end with my new ColourPop lipsticks, some glosses, and then some liquid lipsticks. So I'm kind of pleased with how this drawer looks. I feel like there is a ton of products I'm really excited to try and some old favorites I'm wanting to dig back into. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this updated everyday makeup drawer slash shop my stash video. Let me know down in the comments below if you've tried and loved any of these products. Would love to hear from you guys. I hope you guys are having a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.